Welcome to the Prophecy Club, and I want to talk to you about these storms that are coming up. Now, you know, I don't like to be the bad news bearer here. I don't like to be the one that always has to tell you these things are God. But we're going to be talking about these storms and how it relates to Bible prophecy. Now, your first big question is, did God do these storms in the DFW area? Did God do these storms up in Oklahoma City? What happened? Was that really God in Moore, Oklahoma? All right, here's your answer. Amos 3.6. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city, and the people be not afraid? Shall there be evil in a city, and the Lord hath not done it? Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Okay, now what's that really saying? That's actually three statements. Let's take them one at a time, and then let's talk about what God is saying and if he is really behind these storms, and if he is, what's he saying? What are we supposed to be getting out of it? I think that's a real big question. All right, first question. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people be not afraid? Okay. In those days, when a trumpet was blown, it meant that an invading army is out there. It meant that something really, really serious went on. They didn't, like we do, they didn't just blow the trumpets every Monday at noon to let you know that the trumpet's working. Okay, when that trumpet went off, that meant it was really serious. In other words, the answer to that is no. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people be not afraid? No. When a trumpet is blown, they're going to be afraid. Now, second point. Shall there be evil in a city, and the Lord hath not done it? And the answer, once again, is no. In other words, (laughs) unfortunately, it's saying that when there is evil in a city, the Lord has done it. It's not the devil. It's not the Russians. It's not the scalar wave. Yes, it could be the Russians. It could be the scalar wave. But understand, they would not be doing it unless the Lord was behind it. Now, I want to make a disclaimer. I'm not necessarily saying that every person, every house, everything that was damaged in any of these storms is because that particular person did something wrong. In other words, I don't think that this is an arrow. I think it is more of a shotgun. I think it's a judgment on our nation rather than on that specific person. However, if that person does have the faith to point at that cloud and quote scripture to it, then I do believe they will be protected. But the typical person out there is not anywhere close to that. Uh, they're just, they, they just don't know. They don't understand that they have that authority. Then that ties to the next statement, verse 7. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. That's telling you, which is, by the way, anybody that tells you that God can't talk anymore, uh, turn the station. (laughs) Throw the book away. (laughs) Don't listen to that person because that's not what the word says. The word says, surely the Lord God would do nothing. But he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Now, to say that God has not spoken since John wrote Revelation (laughs) is to say that God has not spoken to anyone in 2,000 years. I think that's absurd. I think anyone that would say that is obviously trying to please the people, trying to see that people don't leave their ministry, don't walk off with their dollars, so that they are trying to make certain that they always get it right, and so everything they say is right. Okay, you know what? I'd love to be able to guarantee you everything I say is right, and I will do my very best, my dead level best, to see that everything I tell you is right. But the truth is, when we get outside the scriptures, and this is the reason they say it, when we get outside the scriptures, when we get into trying to hear the Lord, sometimes it's a really fine line. And I hope that you respect the fact that we at the Prophecy Club do invite people on that are trying their best to hear from God. Now, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let a thing be established. So, when these things start coming off that are not necessarily written in the Bible, how do you know if it's real? Well, I don't have to get into that, and that's not the subject of today's program. But the subject of today's programs is what about these storms? Is this God? If this is God, then what's he saying? What's wrong? Obviously, he's not too happy, so what's going on? All right, 
from a prophetic standpoint, from a person that understands and teaches prophecy and has for some 35 years, let me tell you my opinion. Yes, it's God. No, he is not happy. And yes, he is sending a message, and no, we aren't listening. <laughs> and of course, your 6 o'clock news, your weatherman and stuff like that, why don't they say, well, hey, <laughs> you know, maybe somebody needs to start praying here, guys. Maybe, maybe somebody needs to start saying, hey, is this God? I mean, are we doing something wrong here? Maybe we are. Now, let me also just say that when a storm hits, It doesn't necessarily mean that those people in that particular area have done bad. However, it's difficult to point the finger in any other direction. Now, let me go to March 29th, 1997. It's called Seven Moons. This is from Dimitri Dudeman. Now, in case you don't know that name, let me briefly tell you why we listen to Dimitri Dudeman. This is the guy that was a Romanian pastor, smuggled Bibles into Romanian Russia for some 30 years. He was arrested, put through five months of torture, culminating in them putting him on the electric chair twice, not once, but twice. And they could not kill him. That's a pretty good endorsement, guys. And when they turned the electricity on, the angel Gabriel showed up in the room, said, don't worry, you're not going to die. You're going to America to give them a warning from God. The angel came to him later told him he was going to be released, told him that he would be kicked out of his country, he would be sent to America, told him the year, month, day, and hour it would happen. It all came to pass exactly as the angel said. Now, it's not that Dimitri is anything special any more than any other person. (laughs) It's not that Paul or Matthew, Mark, or Luke, or John is any more special above any other person. However, we have to figure out when God is talking, and in this case, God is talking, and in this case, God is talking specifically to America. So let's read what it says. He says, I was fishing with Sergio and Daniel, my two grandsons. We were in a place called Hot Springs. I assume that's Hot Springs, Arkansas. Suddenly, a man appeared before me which shined exceedingly bright. In other words, an angel came to him. Now, we can figure that out. He went on to say six smaller moons came out of the large one. Every moon appeared... It would cause winds, storms, and tornadoes to start. The people seemed very agitated. They would run from place to place. Then I told my grandson, we have nowhere to run. There are mountains all around us and the storms are getting worse. Trees were flying around. Homes were being demolished. Does this sound familiar? Does this sound like what's been on TV the last couple of days? Okay, I hope you're listening. A lot of people won't listen to this stuff. They'll say, oh, that couldn't be God. You know, what have we done wrong? Okay, we haven't done anything wrong. No, we have gay marriage. We have homosexuals. We are killing babies. No, we're corrupting the whole world. The whole world watches our movies, and they're learning English, but they're also learning filth. Okay, I can go into why God is destroying America, uh, but let's continue with this for right now. There are mountains all around us. And the storms are getting worse. Trees were flying all around. Homes were being demolished. And although the wind was blowing with such intensity, we did not feel it. Daniel was very scared. A man appeared at the edge of the moon, holding a smaller moon in his hands. These were just some of the punishments this country will endure, he said. Now listen, listen, here it is, here it is. Okay, You want to know why these things are coming on? Here it is, okay? Through wind, storms, Tornadoes and disasters, I will weaken their strength. What is happening is God is weakening America's strength. Well, look at it. Our dollar's falling apart. We're about to go through a global reset of every currency. I assume you've already been hearing me talk about that. The plan is in one day, overnight, they plan to reset every currency, some 204 currencies, all in one, all at one time, okay? One morning you'll wake up and you'll discover that the dollar has been devalued along with most of the rest of the currencies and the international bankers are doing this to line their pockets to pay off all of our debts and to reset every currency on the globe, move us closer to a world government. That's their objective. Now, let's go back to what was said. He caused, this is God, okay? God is causing the wind, 
the storms and the tornadoes to start. And he says he's doing it to weaken America. See, what we're supposed to be realizing is that when there is evil in a city, it is God doing it. We're supposed to be realizing that this is a very angry and powerful God that is very angry with this nation. He is calling this nation to stop sinning and to repent and turn back to Jesus because there is an X on the calendar. And when we reach that X, the fall of America, just as is written in Jeremiah 50 and 51, Isaiah 13, 21, 47, and Revelation 18, just as written, will happen. All the new world order needs, all the ruling elite needs is someone, even one person, to pick up a gun against this government. Then that gives them the reason, the cause, the legal standing to begin to collect the firearms, just like I have said is going to happen according to Revelation 16.6, 17.6, 18, 20, and 24. It's coming. They will get the guns. Now, let me continue. The fall of America will start with an internal revolution started by the communists. Some of the people will start fighting against the government. The government will be busy with internal problems. Then from the oceans, Russia, Cuba, Nicaragua, Central America, Mexico, and two other countries will attack and defeat this nation in one day. That's the X on the calendar. That's where we're heading. Somebody said, when is that coming? And my correct answer is, the correct answer, please hear me, is I don't know. My best guess is, and please do not throw rocks at me, I am just a watchman. I'm not a prophet. I have not heard from God that this is the date. Okay, this is my best guess. And I've changed my guess. And by the way, I reserve the right to change my guess. Okay, because that's what it is. That's a guess. I'm trying to say the judgment on America is not next month. I'm trying to say it's not 20 years away. In my best guess, it's probably on or around someplace in the ballpark of 2020. Now, if that doesn't happen, or when that doesn't happen, because our God is a very long-suffering God, and just like Jonah, I don't want to be set standing out on the hill watching it not happen in 2020 because he's very kind and loving and forgiving. But there you go. That's my best guess. Now, don't get mad at me for that. I'm only trying to motivate you to clean up your life. Now, let's go to March 1994. This is still talking about storms and floods and the earthquakes that God is sending on this nation, trying to get us to wake up, to recognize it's him, to wake up and stop sinning and repent and turn to Jesus. But, you see, we don't have to worry about this because we're going in a pre-trib rapture. Uh, wrong. I had gone to bed early, about 8 p.m., he says. I woke up about midnight, maybe 1 a.m. I got up and prayed, then went back to bed. I dreamed there was a lot of turmoil outside, and I kept hearing everyone yell, Jesus is coming! Jesus is coming! I looked out, and I saw a very large red cloud. When I looked at it, its outer edges could not be seen. As I continued to look, I saw a tall man come out of the cloud, meaning an angel. He was so tall that although his feet touched the ground, I could not see his head. Rays of light began to explode out of the man. When one passed by me, I would fall to the ground. I could not look at him with my eyes because he was too bright. He then began to hand me letters. They were addressed to various churches. I knew that these must be American churches because I didn't recognize any of the names of being a Romanian. The first letter said, My people who are discouraged and beaten by the storms. Many who have let themselves be beaten by the enemy, stand up, cry out before God that he may save you. Now, let me just say something about that. Look, when we see these storms coming upon America, we should not just go into our closet and just say, oh, this is the judgment of God. It's coming. There's nothing I can do. Oh, yes, there is. You stand up and you point at that cloud and you say, greater is he that is within me than in he that is within the world, and you take authority. I've been given power to tread upon all of the serpents and the scorpions, and in the name of Jesus, you loose off from attacking this earth. There'll be no attack around here, just as I prayed yesterday and the day before. I've already prayed today. You say, I plead the blood of Jesus over my body, soul, spirit, all of my house, my possessions, those people around me. Lord, I ask you to place angels round about me so that 
no harm or evil befall us. And storm, you speak to the storm, you see, okay? Because everything in the universe hears the word of the Lord. Don't hear your word. It hears the word of the Lord. So you speak to that storm and you say, in the name of Jesus, you are not going to cause any harm to us or our neighbors here. You are going to be a storm of blessing in Jesus' name. That's what I did the other night, and we can get hit. Now, let's continue. Cry out before God that he may save you. The man kept coming, giving me more letters and more names of churches of different denominations and also independent churches. He gave me very many papers. Then he said to me, when you finish taking these papers where you're supposed to, you will see something that you've never seen before. There was thunder and the voice spoke again. Tell all my people to pray and repent. The days have been shortened because of all the iniquities. My people repent because the days are numbered. I began to see the days passing by. But whenever the ray of light would pass me by, I would fall down. The days were passing by so quickly, I could not count them. The voice spoke again. Tell my people that I tried to wake them up through powerful storms, fires, floods, and earthquakes. But even then, they would not wake up. This is why I will pour my wrath when they least expect it. The angel gave me a scripture, Joel 2, 12 through 13, which says, Now therefore, says the Lord, turn unto me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and with mourning. So rent your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and he relents from doing harm. After these things, the cloud and the angel begin to fade away. When I woke up, I was wet with sweat. Now, what's God saying to us? Okay, it's not just these storms lately. We have been hit with various earthquakes all over. Not a real bad one, not yet, but it's coming. We have been hit with financial disasters. Our government is taken over by evil people in high places. The, the Bible says when the, when the righteous rule, the people rejoice. But when the evil rules, they mourn. Are we not mourning? I mean, our nation is in so much trouble. You see, what God is doing, and it is God, make no mistake, it is God sending these storms, fires, floods, two things. It is weakening our nation, and the more we sin and not repent and turn away from him, the more he sends repentance. He is actually long-suffering. He is not willing that any should perish, but all should come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ, you see. He wants us to be like Nineveh. He wants us to make the prophet on the hill the liar. He wants us to make Demetri Dudeman and these other people that he has spoken to. Truly, he spoke them. He wants us to make them the liar. He wants us to stop sinning and repent. Do you remember what the Lord spoke to Jonah when he said, hey, how come you didn't destroy it? He said, look, he said, these people don't even know the right hand for the left hand. You know, let me just ask you. <laughs> we just had Thurman Scrivener in to speak. By the way, did a wonderful job. You got to get the DVDs. He asked a question. He said, how many of you have memorized at least 10 scriptures? And you could pull out a piece of paper and write them down right now. And only one or two hands went up. Brothers and sisters, you got to know the word, okay? And you got to quote it. It's not enough to just say, well, you know, the Bible sort of says. Okay, look, th the storms don't listen to sort of says. The storms don't listen to you. The storms listen to the word of God, and that's the only thing they obey. That's the only thing the devils obey. And all power in heaven and earth has been given to Jesus Christ. Now, if all power been given to him, who has some more power? <laughs> it's all been given to him, all right? So if we have a storm, a fire, a flood, an earthquake, if we have an invading army, if we have a nuclear bomb heading our way, what do we do? Because we've been walking in cleanness and righteousness and holiness and we have our prayer closet, we stopped sinning a long time ago. Then because we've memorized the scripture, we have the authority and confidence to point up to that rascal, whatever it is, and tell him it's not going to happen. We're going to put the blood of Jesus over us and our property. We're going to put the blood of Jesus over our neighbors. We're going to put the angels around about us and no harm or evil is going to befall us, okay? Now, let me go to the next one. July 1st, 
1994. It was past midnight. This is called Three Scrolls. I could not sleep because I felt inside that God was going to speak to me, so I began to pray. After I prayed, I went to bed and fell asleep. I dreamed, and I began to hear thunder and see lightning. The earth began to move and shake violently. I yelled to my family, wake up, wake up, because something is happening outside. When I got outside, there was such darkness. I couldn't see anything. Yet, in the darkness, I could hear the voices of children and women and men screaming. I told my family to be careful how they walked. From the clouds that released this darkness over the earth, I heard a powerful voice say, I am taking revenge against the sin. I am taking revenge that they may see my power. With as much as I have blessed them, that is how much I will send destruction. I will send. Now listen. Storms, heavy rains, flooding, earthquakes, hurricanes, and tornadoes. Because I want them to see my power and know that without me, they can do nothing. They've trusted in themselves and in their own strengths. This is why I will punish this place. The earth moved as if it was on water. The people lived in complete terror, each one yelling louder than the other, not being able to understand anything. The earth shook so violently that I was not able to walk. Suddenly, in the midst of all the tumult, a light appeared, more powerful than anything I've ever seen before. In the shining light, there were two men. One of them said to me, I came to talk to you. I will send plagues over America, and I want you to be aware I told you what will happen in this place. Be cautious, for the time is drawing near. After these words, he took out a scroll, which he began to unroll very quickly. It was so long, I could not see its end. On the first scroll of paper were written all kinds of names. Beside each name was listed their punishment, or a type of disease. All kinds of them were listed, trial, torment. Those named will have to go through what is listed by their name, in order to be cleansed and be able to stand. Why well, it does away with the pre-trib, mid-trib, pre-breath rapture, doesn't it? The scroll was then rolled up and sealed, and a second one was brought out. On it was written, Peace, joy in the Holy Spirit, salvation, or victory for those that love me and worked for me and kept their life clean, but not for the hypocrites, the proud, the boastful, the hateful, nor others which I cannot recall. The scroll continued to pass by slowly before my eyes until it finished passing. Then a second scroll opened, which had names on it, and there was something written only beside the names on the top half. From the halfway mark down by each name, there were flashing stars. I asked what this meant. One of the men said, Those are the ones whom the number would be completed. The seed of God has reached their hearts and is even now working toward repentance. When the total number will be complete, all of the devastation will begin. Until then, I will send plagues over America that they may wake up from their sleep, which they are sleeping, and from their self-reliance, that they may see their pride and boastfulness. It then began to rain ice and hail. The people were scattering all over, knowing not which way to go. From the terror of the screams, I woke up. He said, this dream was so real, I went directly outside to see if it was happening at that very moment. Now, brothers and sisters, we have been warned. Do not think these tornadoes, these floods and storms and fires and earthquakes, do not think this is the devil. Do not think this is some Russians with scalar wave. It might be scalar wave, but understand, it's God in control of it. Again, the Bible says, shall there be evil in the city and the Lord hath not done it? Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret to his servants, the prophets. God has spoken his secret. He's told us what he's going to do through the mouth, in this case, of Demetri Dudeman. Now let's pray a prayer for these next storms. Father, we ask that you would loose off of these storms and that you would protect the people, the houses, and the property so there would be no more loss of life this year. And you would use this to bring repentance to the hearts of the people. In Jesus' name, amen. Now we can choose to ignore it or we can choose to say, you know what? This is the word of the Lord. I don't care what my pastor says. I don't care what my denomination believes. I don't care what I've heard of the places. This is the word of the Lord. And even if it's not the word of the Lord, it lines up with the word. I got to get right. 
look, if you're doing some kind of little secret sin, you can fool me, you can fool your mom, you can fool your brothers, you can fool your uh, dad, your uh, wife, your husband, you can fool all, you can fool everybody. But you're not fooling God. He says every idle word. He even says that he's going to judge us by the reins of our heart. Not only what we do, but why we do it. He knows it all. He made the eyes, he can see it. He made the ears, he can hear it. He made the brain, he can think it. He knows it all. We don't even understand how powerful our God is. Brothers and sisters, the only way to receive God's protection in the days ahead is you got to stop sinning now and repent now. Build a prayer closet. Look, if you think you're going to wait until the last minute and you're going to turn to Christ then, mm -mm. Dimitri told me this joke. He said, two men ran across a bridge. He said, first man, he didn't stop. He just ran across the bridge. Second man, he stopped, got down on his knees, prayed a real fervent prayer. Lord, protect me as I go across this bridge. Halfway across, the bridge collapsed and he died. He said, how's that right in the eyes of God? I said, I don't know. He said, the first man, he prays all the time. He has a prayer closet. He said, the second man, he only prays when he's in trouble. If you're only turning to God when you're in trouble or you're planning to wait until you're in trouble to turn to God, let me just tell you, you wait until the day you need God and turn to Him, He will not hear you. I'm telling you, that's the Word. That's the way He works. Hey, well, what would you do? Would you turn to someone that had been turning their back and shunning you all of this time? Yeah, they get in a little trouble. Now you turn to me? Mm -mm, doesn't work that way. you got to stop sinning or repent. Turn to Jesus now with all your heart. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your prayers. And yes, it's summertime. <laughs> Thank you especially for your support. God bless. Now from the Prophecy Club, some exciting opportunities for you. As prophecy students, we know an emergency is heading our way. And the average person can go over 30 days without food, but no more than three days without clean water. In the event of an emergency, you must have clean water almost immediately. One of the primary causes of death in emergencies is not lack of food, but rather drinking contaminated water. You can run water from a mud puddle through a Berkey and drink it. You can have clean water when others are getting sick from drinking bug-infested water. Your filter must work without pressurized water or electricity, which is why the missionaries choose Berkey. You can get a Go Berkey for $139, but I recommend you get the Royal Berkey with four filters for $364. I personally use the Crown with eight filters for all my daily water needs. A Royal Berkey looks like a large stainless steel coffee pot, 9 inches wide by 20 inches tall, with four black filters. It processes over a gallon an hour for a gift of $364. Call 785-266-1112. Ask for the Royal Berkey, 785-266-1112. 